Good Monday morning, Dr. Nelson at News Talk, 640 WFNC Talk Radio. This is Ask the Expert. We're talking about chiropractic health care. And uh, we're waiting on a special guest, Commissioner Wayne Goodwin, who is in favor of chiropractic care. Uh, Commissioner Goodwin understands the cost benefits of chiropractic. And uh, certainly as the president of the North Carolina Chiropractic Association, I have worked to educate our fine citizens of North Carolina with uh, about uh, chiropractic and how its effectiveness in our state of North Carolina. We have nearly four, uh, six million residents of North Carolina, and there's one person who's in charge with an office of over 400 people, and that's Commissioner Wayne Goodwin, and he works in the Raleigh area. Commissioner Goodwin is a UNC graduate in Chapel Hill, and uh, also graduated from law school. He is a local uh, Hamlet uh, resident, and uh, a Richmond Raider. And uh, for nearly uh, four terms, he has served in the House of Representatives for Richmond, Scotland, Montgomery, and Stanley County, and uh, was the assistant commissioner for many years in 2005, and then was elected commissioner of the Department of Insurance in 2009. I should say that the commissioner has worked to reduce rates and is responsible for almost $800 million of surplus in the coastal property insurance pool in North Carolina. Uh, in addition to that, refunds totaling $50 million were delivered in one of four, dri one to four drivers in North Carolina, reductions in workman's compensation rates, $115 million for North Carolina residents and businessmen, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield returned $155 million to nearly 215,000 families in North Carolina. So the commissioner has been an advocate of fairness and uh, has certainly done a fine job as the insurance commissioner. Good morning, Commissioner. Pleasure to join with you again. You are on the road. You are always traveling on the road to all the 100 counties in North Carolina. It, uh, this job involves not only saving people money, but traveling across the state. And today I'm headed to uh, uh, Carteret County and uh, the beautiful coast of the state. Yeah, it's a, it's a big job. And like I said, Commissioner, over 400 employees in your department. You cover a lot of ground, and uh, it's a major role. We were talking about uh, the impact of the uh, exchange on North Carolina, and a lot of people don't understand how this will affect their lives, what is the exchange, and uh, how the national insurance uh, debate uh, affects North Carolinians. Can you give us an update? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, part of the federal law, and again, no matter how one feels about various components of the federal law, one, one part among several that has broad support is the concept of making insurance information available so that consumers and families and small businesses can can be empowered with information and, and basically choose insurance plans that are more, uh, uh, I guess, more in tune with their needs and they can compare plans like apples to apples. Here's the best example, uh, Dr. Nelson, is that I know a lot of your, your listeners have no doubt uh, flown on an airplane and they've they may have ordered their tickets online. And when you order your airline tickets online, you can compare airline to airline and dollar for dollar. You can choose your seats, you can choose your food, choose how many stops you make, and all those other sorts of things. But it's a company-to-company -company comparison, apples to apples. And what this exchange does, the concept that has support from conservatives, moderates, liberals, you name them, uh, is that it gives people information that, they can choose between health insurance carriers. They can choose a plan that suits their pocketbook and be able to really compare things one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, I certainly wanted the state to have the exchange instead of the federal folks, but we're still working on that, getting the state to set one up itself. I know one of the biggest obstacles you have, Commissioner, is the challenge to your seat. A lot of times the commissioner is, uh, is challenged and lobbied for higher rates. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I'm sure you're most proud of is North Carolina ranks 46 out of 50 in the lowest car insurance in the country. And uh, I know that you're constantly lobbied to raise those rates, and uh, that's got to be something you're very proud about for the citizens of North Carolina. Uh, y yes, indeed. In fact, uh, every year or two, there's a there's a constant assault by some of these, or well, many of these out-of-state insurance companies, to raise car insurance rates. And you know, we have not only the, among on the national level, uh, the rankings have us between fifth lowest and eighth lowest, but in the South, we have the very lowest, from Delaware to Texas, and that saves money for families and for small businesses and 
And, uh, you know, and as you said a while ago, one of the first things I did as insurance commissioner is that I rolled back the rates to what they were many years ago, froze them, ordered refunds of $50 million to a million drivers in the state, and then had savings of about $545 million. So, so I, I want to keep us, I want to do our best to keep a system that's keeping our rates low and protecting consumers while still giving folks options. We have tons of insurance companies who are competing here to write your car insurance. So it's a win-win for us all. One of the things is the uh, role of competition. You know, we see that with regards to insurance, auto insurance, where you can shop for the best policy that if, and with the best benefits that you feel is necessary. And one of the discussions in this health care debate is, the, is the, the, the role of competition, which hasn't been, uh, you don't see it as much in the health care debate as you do in the insurance debate. Isn't that one of the factors, uh, one of the things that can help to lower health care insurance costs to our states? Uh, that, that is exactly right. Uh, more competition helps helps lower rates. And, I, and I, will, I was looking at the data just a little while ago, is that, you know, unlike car insurance, and unlike health, uh, unlike uh, homeowner's insurance, and unlike life insurance, there are hundreds and hundreds of companies writing that type of insurance. In North Carolina, you can count the number of viable health insurance carriers on two hands. And if you're able to, if we're able to, to bring in more competition on health insurance, then that could give more, certainly would give more options and give uh, uh, a better rate, uh, better rate options as well for our families. With regards to the uh, impact of the health care insurance, what, do you, what are the mandates now on North Carolina? Have they actually gone, they've gone into effect? I know it's an election year and I know things can change, but what, are, what, are, what is expected of North Carolina with regards to the national health care uh, plan that people may not understand? Well, it, uh, when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in, uh, in June, late June, uh, it upheld the, the uh, federal health insurance law, and even though it has some components in it that folks don't like, there are components that people like across the board, and some of them that have come into effect include uh, not allowing pre-existing conditions to prevent you from, from getting insurance coverage. That is something which is being, being uh, uh, allowed to occur in a graduated fashion. Right now you can't uh, insurance companies can't keep kids off of health insurance because of their pre-existing condition. And uh, within the next uh, 18 months or so, I believe that the then this adults cannot be prohibited from getting insurance coverage because they had a pre-existing condition. Another uh, item that is uh, kicking in, is, and this has been very popular uh, as it's been rolled out, is allowing families the option of keeping their older children on their family insurance policy through age 26, and that helps lower insurance costs for the family and certainly for that young adult. Um, and there's some other things, too, involving for, uh, uh, wellness wellness and, uh, and prevention that are being rolled out. But it, it'll take several years, assuming that Congress doesn't change the law and assuming there's not a, you know, a, a change in the, in, in the interpretation of that law. One of the things that we've talked about before was your impact on auto insurance and yet you, the states really don't have the same sort of regulatory power that you have with regards to auto insurance and some other the insurance that's offered in our state. Isn't that correct, that uh, the more that the states have a right uh, to, a, to try and address this issue, the better off that the citizens of North Carolina will be? Yeah, that is correct. I'm a, uh, and to me, this is not a partisan issue. It's just the right thing is to have state in, uh, be the regulator of insurance and not the federal government. Uh, whenever the states have regulated insurance, uh, we've been able to help respond more quickly to to consumer concerns and complaints. And in fact, I, my office fielded 80,000 calls last year, and and we were able to recover uh, over the, just just last year alone about about 20 million dollars for folks. And of course.